Hello and welcome to the Global Science Show. My name is Graham Eddowes and I'm a PhD student at the University of Glasgow and I study as part of the Institute for Gravitational Research. So our research group works as part of the worldwide LIGO scientific collaboration, uh, working on the detection and analysis of gravitational waves with over 1,200 scientists from 100 institutions around the world. These gravitational wave detectors are amongst the most sensitive scientific instruments on the planet and are held inside one of the world's biggest vacuum systems. The pressure inside one of these vacuum systems is so low that it's about one trillionth that of atmospheric pressure. As an experimental physicist, my research involves working with cryogenics. This is working with temperatures as low as minus 269 degrees Celsius or 4 Kelvin. And to do this, I also work with vacuum systems. My PhD is trying to design and build a new type of gravitational wave detector that can operate at really, really low temperatures. In doing so, this will make it more sensitive to detecting gravitational waves. So today, we're going to do a little bit of thermodynamics by investigating the relationship between pressure, which is how much force is acting on an area, and temperature, which is how hot or cold something is, or how much thermal energy it has. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to drink a fair amount of coffee. And for this, I sometimes use my coffee siphon, which relies on temperature and pressure to make it. So let's have a look at how thermodynamics can keep us all caffeinated. First, let's look a little bit at the theory. The combined gas law tells us that pressure times volume is proportional to temperature. Proportional means the left-hand side of the equation is some multiple of the right-hand side of the equation. To simplify this, we have a constant volume to make coffee. So we are only interested in the fact that pressure is proportional to temperature. This simply means that if the temperature drops, the pressure drops also. If the pressure increases, then the temperature must also increase. Now, let's take a look at our coffee siphon. Here we have the boiling flask at the bottom, which I can add hot water into. Here we have the top of the siphon. It has a rubber seal and a filter to ensure that only liquid, but not solid, in this case ground coffee, can flow through it. Next, we apply heat via a white spirit burner. This will cause the temperature within the boiling flask to increase and the water starts to boil. So, what happens to the pressure of the air in the flask as the temperature increases? Well, we know from before that pressure is proportional to temperature. So if the temperature increases, we know that the pressure must also increase. And it does. You can see here that the pressure in the air being warmed up is pushing water up the central channel. Now for the most important part, we can brew the coffee. So what happens when I remove the heat? Well, we know the temperature must drop. And now we know the pressure must drop also. So the combination of the dropping pressure causing a suction or siphon effect, plus the help of gravity, draws the brewed coffee back down into the bottom flask. We can see bubbles towards the end as the lower pressure actually sucks air back into the bottom of the flask through the liquid below. And now we have a perfect thermodynamically brewed coffee. To finish off, here are some slightly more advanced things to think about. Number one, if pressure affects temperature, does water always boil at 100 degrees Celsius? Number two, what kind of change happens when you boil the water? How much more of an impact on the pressure in the flask does this have than just warming the air already in there? Number three, is the volume truly constant here? Hopefully, you can now mull over these questions with your newly thermodynamically produced coffee. You can follow me at GEDLES on Twitter, and I'll put some links below 
that cover our gravitational wave research and also some links to some more thermodynamics. Thanks.